Hey, hello. Here we are, Microsoft Word exercise 11. We're going to start on page 93 with this exercise. But actually, we're going to jump right into our assignment first, and then I will work you some of the skills. As you can see, it's only 93, 94, and a little bit of 95. So there's not much in this one. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our assignment. And our assignment starts on 96, and it says to start Word. And I've already done that, and hopefully you've already done that as well. And I'm going to make mine fit in the screen a little bit better. Here we go. Uh, number two says open 11 order. And this was actually in your Google Classroom, and you have to download this file in order to complete this assignment. Uh, if you have not done that, please pause this video. Uh, go download 11 order. Open it, save it to your desktop, and then join me back. So you're back, and we are going to open that file. So I'm going to go to the Office button and then Open. And this file is on our desktop, so when that dialog box pops up, we're going to click on Desktop. And on our desktop, we're looking for 11 order, and here it is. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to open it. <coughs> And number three tells us to save it as 11 order 2 underscore. So let's go ahead and take care of that and save it to our desktop. So we're going to save as. You're probably getting pretty good at saving stuff to your desktop. Scroll up, change it to your desktop. And actually, right here, I don't even have to retype it. If I hit, if I look on my keyboard and look at the arrow keys, or I can just click the mouse and put the 2. Shift underscore RT and save him. Number four tells us to change today's date, uh, the date to today's date, whenever mine gets done saving. And there we go. Now we're ready. Almost ready. Still waiting. Good. All right, we're going to change the date. Now, you could simply type everything in right here if you wanted to. But I'm going to click, hold, and drag and make all of that blue. And then I'm going to go to the Insert tab. And from the Insert tab, I'm going to insert the date and time. We've done this before. Click on Date and Time, and we're actually going to pick the third one on the list. And that would be the Month, Date, Year. Uh, this part right here, update automatically, we're not going to put a check in that box. So go ahead and click OK, and my date automatically pops in there. A lot easier than typing it in there. Number five says to display the document in split screen, and that was actually one of our skills we were to learn, but we're going to do this within our document. This is one letter, and we're going to change it to split screen. And I'm going to flip back actually to page 95 to make sure I know how to do this. And on 95, it says open split screen. Starting with number one there, it says click on the view tab. And then click the split button. Not hard at all. It's right here in the Windows group. So click split. And then you see this gray bar come across your screen and you actually tell it where to split it at. And so we're going to split right between the date and this guy's name. And now it looks like we have two documents, but actually this is the same document. And actually I can still adjust how I want my split screen to work. And there's two different active planes here, or panes. If I click in this top one, now this one's active and I can scroll. And I click in the bottom one. And I scroll the bottom one, but the top one does not move. And there's actually a way to get them to scroll at the same time, but I'm not even going to go through that because that is pretty much pointless to me. But anyway, so to switch back and forth, and again, it looks like two documents, but actually it is the same document. And as if you scroll through, uh, for example, let's see if we can find this trend is most disturbing. I uh, must have messed it. Here it is. The trend is most disturbing. And so it is the exact same letter. And you can even see here's her name, Gretchen. Scroll down, and here is Gretchen. So it's the same letter. I can just see it in two different areas. So the question may come up why do this? Okay. And it'll make a little more sense why to do something like this as we complete our assignment. So let's just go to number five. And it says display the document in split screen view. We've done that. And number six, adjust the zoom in the top pane. Okay, this would be the top pane, so click in here, make this one active, and we're going to make the zoom, 
we're going to... Number six, sorry, we're going to adjust the zoom to page width. So let's see, um, I'm guessing it's oh, right here in the zoom group, page width. So let's click on him. It didn't do anything, so I guess it's already page width. Number seven, adjust the contents of the top pane to show from the inside address to the first paragraph of the letter. And that just simply means we're going to scroll back up. And here's the inside address. And here's the first part of the letter. Number eight, click on the bottom pane. Make him active. And we're going to adjust the zoom to text width. And let's see if we can find that. I'm guessing it's going to be somewhere in this zoom group. Let's try to click on this magnifying glass, this hand lens. And let's see, I got some numbers, page width. Oh, here's text width right here. So the middle one, put a dot in that circle, then click OK. And the text it looks like it got a lot wider. Oh, yeah, it sure did. It got a lot bigger. So I guess uh, that made it zoom. Number nine, scroll down to the bottom of the pane until you see the paragraph beginning. Please contact me as soon as possible. So let's find him. Please contact me as soon as possible. Here we go. Number 10, we're going to insert the recipient's name at the beginning of the sentence. Refer to the information in the top pane. So the question to be answered, why do something like this? This would be a good reason why. Instead of having to scroll all the way back up to the document and find this guy's name, if I do split screen, now I can take this guy's name and now I can type it right here and look at it. Or even better, I could copy it, paste it, either way. I'm going to show you both ways. Now the simplest way is just to start typing. Okay, and actually they tell us that um, we're going to refer to illustration A to complete this. And so we want it to say Mr. O'Rourke, comma, Please contact me as soon as possible. And so the P will actually be lowercase. And I believe it says that number 11. So edit the text, use the grammar and punctuation, for example. Da -da 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 -da. Yep, just like illustration A. So the simplest way, of course, is to do Mr. O apostrophe, comma, and then go to the P backspace and just put a please. And you know what? Mine looks just like that. But let's say, you know, I'm always into shortcuts, so I'm just going to simply highlight. I'm on the top document now, and I'm just going to highlight his name. And I can do Control C, or I can right click and copy. Now go to the bottom pane and put it right in front of the P, and I'm actually going to lowercase the P first. Go to in front of the P, do Control V, or I can right click. Nope, I need to right click. It's not letting me do it. Wait a minute, there it was. Paste. So Mr. O'Rourke, and I have to backspace one time, or do the arrow key one time, and put the comma in. So there's either way you could do that. And this is about the only reason why you would use split screen. If you had a really long document and you wanted to refer to something at the beginning in order to put it at the end, you could use the split screen. Now we're going to remove the split screen, so I'm guessing we stay in the view tab and we go to the window and we're going to remove the split. So I'm going to click right here where it says remove split and let's see if it fixed it. So we have Dear Mr. O'Rourke. Let's go down to the last paragraph. And there it is, Mr. O'Rourke, please, comma, please contact me as soon as possible. So pretty easy. Uh, one other thing I'm going to show you, um, and it was about the only other thing in this chapter, is called the side-by-side -side view. And I'm going to refer back to 95, because I need to refresh my memory on this. And so we want to go side-by-side. Here we go. Actually, it's on page 96, so it's right there. Compare documents side by side. So we're in the View tab again, and we're going to view side by side. There must be a button that looks like a book. Oh, I bet you I have to have an open other document to do, too. So let's do that. Let's just hit the Office button, create a new one, and let's just open a blank document. That's fine. 
hit create and now we're side by side now let's go to view so you have a new document your other ones right behind it click on view and there our button is ready to go view side by side and so here's another feature you could use if you were doing two letters at once and you wanted to copy and paste or retype something so for example I mean I could and I still have to click back and forth so I could highlight this I could copy him go to this letter paste and I could create create another letter viewing this one at the same time and if I was really good at my typing skills I could look at the letter um, and type for the third time in a row and so on and so on and so those are two features of this chapter they wanted to show you how to do the split screen and they also wanted to show you how to do um, the side by side view and if you had three documents you could do all three of them side by side if you had four they would put them one up here two up here three four they would put it into a box form okay now be really careful right here which one you close make sure you're closing document two and make sure you keep 11 order 2 open this one we're gonna close we don't need him anymore I was just showing you the split screen no I do not want to save Wow, that was really loud okay now I'm back to my original document and we're gonna do two things before we turn in our assignment the first one is we're going to add in one of our autocorrect features and this is not in the chapter this is an addition you may want to do this for future reference but in the office button go down to your word options it's down here at the bottom click on him and when this next window pops up we're gonna go to proofing click on proofing and then go to autocorrect and open him and we're actually this is the autocorrect dialog box and since we've been using this Michigan Avenue Athletic Club, I figured we'd make us a little shortcut and a little autocorrect. So right here where it says replace, we're going to put M-A-A-C. And then over on this side, we're going to type in Michigan Avenue Athletic Club. Club. Let's see if I can get it right this time. You B. Here we go. And then we're going to click Add. And now it's put it in there. And then when you have that in there, click. O you're going to click OK. And then, oh, mine's off the screen here. I'll let me move it up. I'm trying to get it off the screen there. I can't. Well, OK is down here at the bottom. If you can see it down there, I'm going to have to move mine out of the way. We'll click OK. And then now go to the very bottom and go down to Gretchen Whitman, the Pro Shop, and then do your insertion point at the end of her name hit the enter key one time and tab one time and it should go over there and then type M A A C and then do spacebar and then it changes for you automatically so we made this addition and one last thing we're gonna put a letterhead and there's this big empty area up here we're gonna put us a word art for the Michigan Athletic or Michigan Avenue Athletic Club. So to do that, first B, let's go to insert. And there's this button right here that says header, because that's what this blank space is, right? Let's call it a header. So click on header. And then they give you all kind of options of like templates of headers. But actually we're gonna put our own in. So let's go to edit header and then now we're able to manipulate something in the header and so in the header we have to go back to insert because our word art is not available here let's go to insert and then all the way over here with this blue a click on word art and actually we're going to pick the one two three fourth one and right here let's see if the m a a c works nope we have to actually type it in So Michigan Avenue Athletic Club, and I'm going to leave mine at Impact. Um, you can change your font if you want, but I'm going to leave mine at Impact. Click 
click OK. And now we have this nice letterhead, but I really don't like that shape. So I'm going to change my shape by clicking on the Change Shape button. And I'm going to change it to this one, which is Deflate Bottom. And it kind of gives us a nice bridge. And I'm done with this. And down underneath this blue line, I'm going to double click. And I might have to scroll back up, it looks like. And I've inserted a letterhead in the header. And that's why it looks light gray, because it's not actually part of the letter. It's in the header area. But then it gives us a nice feel. But I want to make sure this letter is one page, because see, it comes on the next one. So if we go to the print preview, and then we have our magic shrink to one page button. And it brings everything to one page. Close your print preview. We have one page. And we have our header. And this is going to complete our assignment for today. So let's save to the desktop. And then once I have it saved to my desktop, then I'll be able to turn it into my Google Classroom. 11 order 2 underscore my initials. And it should ask me if I want to. Yep, I do want to replace it. And after I click Yes, Mine's running pretty slow today. But anyway, once it finishes saving, you can close out Word and turn this into your Google Classroom. Um, enjoyed working with you today, and I look forward to our next assignment together. Have a great day.